Hello, and welcome to IRI Growth Insights, featuring IRI thought leaders, industry partners, and guests. For more than 40 years, IRI has been known for its invaluable data, but these podcasts delve into the insights the data reveal to fuel market disruption and market growth for those in the CPG, retail, healthcare, and media markets. I'm your host, Joan Driggs, coming to you from IRI's corporate headquarters in Chicago. Hello, and welcome to IRI Growth Insights. I'm Joan Driggs, and today we're going to be talking about out-of-home advertising, specifically beyond billboards, connecting with consumers out of home. You know, when we in the CPG industry think of out-of-home advertising, we think of billboards. But with digital enablement, out-of-home goes wherever the consumer and the shopper goes. Digital out-of-home strategies are helping retailers and brands connect with consumers in meaningful ways, especially as we're navigating through this pandemic. And we've got some measurement metrics to prove it. Today, I'm joined by Leslie Lee, Vice President of Marketing for Vistar, um, a good partner to IRI, and my colleague, Shelly Murphy, Principal in our Media Center of Excellence. Welcome to you both. Um, So we're going to start with you, Leslie, because, again, I'm thinking automatically my head goes to billboards when I hear out of home. So give us a little bit of a backstory on on basically out of home advertising. Hi. Um, Yeah. So, you know, out of home is really one of the oldest forms of advertising that exists. And since About the 1800s, um, brands have been using billboards and other types of traditional out-of-home to generate brand awareness and get the word out about their products. And that type of static uh, billboard advertising is still a huge part of the out-of-home ecosystem today, but actually out-of-home today has a lot more to it. A lot of media owners are converting some of their most profitable locations into digital formats, um, and there's really a huge variety of out of home formats available today and a lot of new exciting advertising capabilities. So the media actually is much more dynamic than it used to be and there's a lot more to it than often comes to mind when people think of out of home. Um, you know, I think one of the one of the really amazing things that brands can do today is w- since it's digital, they can actually update their messaging and change the creatives that they're showing almost in real time. So advertisers could um you know, trigger messaging based on things like day part or the weather condition. So let's say if you're a frozen foods brand, you might want to show your breakfast sausage product in the morning when people are hungry and thinking about that, and then actually change it so that you're highlighting maybe a frozen dinner entree in the evening. And advertisers can actually do that today all within one campaign setup that just uses data and information to trigger the right creative to show at the most appropriate times. So there's really a lot more um, dynamic capabilities available today, thanks to the rise of digital um, as part of the out-of-home landscape. You know, that's interesting because I don't know that, you know, I think, again, driving down the road and looking at some of these billboards, and I guess it is... Now that you're bringing that to light, I probably have noticed them, but haven't made that connection. Um, You know, I'm here in the Midwest and I'm actually thinking of a very popular um, company in the area that makes like mats for cars and things (laughs) like that. But they change theirs quite often having to do having, you know, based on weather or time of year. And those are you know, I don't even know that they're digital boards. They might just, I guess they must be digital boards that I'm thinking of if they're changing that often. Um, So you're kind of, maybe I'm thinking, oh, I've been talked to in ways that are more personal than I really imagined. Um, Other than guess who has now mats in her car. (laughs) (laughs) For those Chicago winters, Joan, we need them. It is. So you know, would you say then like the core mission of out of home? I mean, is it okay? I might have been one person who took action, but is it awareness? Is it action? Like what is the basis of out of home? I believe it is both those things, which means out of home is really addressing both top and bottom funnel metrics. 
Out of Homes driving people to specific stores while also promoting products and services and connecting with the consumers throughout their day. And by doing so, by you know, multiple touch points throughout our busy life, Out of Home is building awareness, that top funnel of a product and also driving foot traffic to retail. The ultimate is that the in-store media inventory of Out of Home can further influence decisions when consumers are at shelf ready to make a purchase. So that lower funnel. Okay. But that's where I don't, you know, like that's the disconnect to me. So tell me what that in home or being that in store actually looks like. Yeah, I think um, this is one of the biggest misconceptions about out of home. Again, people really think of it just being billboards, but actually out of home looks like a lot of things today. And it's particularly strong in the in retail point of purchase environment. So um, you might see a lot of screens while you're shopping. This could be things like kiosks that offer some sort of service to the consumer. So maybe that's um, key copying or a coin exchange or a DVD rental service. Um, there are some networks that actually have screens at the shelf level. Um, and then there's lots and lots that are at the checkout counter. So really right at that final point of purchase. Um, and actually, recently, it's gone even beyond just this variety of screens. And now there is even um, audio only out of home. So you can be kind of piping your brand message into the store environment through, you know, through the same speakers that play their general store announcements. So there's really a huge variety of ways that advertisers can kind of infuse their brand messaging all through that retail experience, which I think, you know, again, reinforces that idea of having multiple ways to reach your consumer um, as they're making those really critical purchase decisions. So I just heard signage, I heard um, audio, and I heard screens. So those are all forms of in-store, out-of-home advertising. And does any yes. of this does any of this transfer to mobile devices? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we do a lot of work where we combine that type of physical location out of home and then we target consumers on their mobile device. So that's a really, the combination of the two creates a really powerful connection of, you know, sort of the mass media reach in these unique environments and then that one-on-one -on -one direct connection with the consumer after the fact. So that's crazy. So that is bringing, I think you mentioned all those touch points together into one kind of universe um, for connecting with consumers. Okay, that is super. Um, so then let's take a little bit or like, let's kind of dig in a little bit more into um, how out of home, first of all, kind of connects together within its own system, but then how it also connects with other ways that, you know, consumers are being targeted. Yeah, I would say a, a critical first step to that, Joan, is targeting your audience based on more than just demographics. I'm going to repeat this because I think it is worth it. Target your audience beyond demographics. There really needs to be a purchase-based element when defining and qualifying who is the group you want to talk to about your product or service. For consumer packaged good products, as an example, sending communication to households that don't even buy yogurt just because that household fits a demographic criteria for people that buy yogurt is wasteful. Ensuring that there's historical purchasing of the category or your product or a competitor, depending on what your strategy is, will result in stronger outcomes for conversion to offline sales. We've studied it and the results you know, are, are roughly two to three times stronger when you do take the time to to be really thoughtful about who you're talking to and ensuring it's the right audience will result in a stronger outcome for conversion to offline sales. Okay. So how do you do that? If I'm, you know, if I'm out and about, I mean, granted, you know, we're not driving in our cars quite to the extent that we used to be, but um, we're still in store, even if we want to make it a quick trip, how are you targeting those people in a store? Because there's going to be yogurt buyers there, for example. Yeah. So this is, I think, one of the things that really um, surprises people that you're able to do with out of home today. Um, we actually can specifically target audiences. So 
the way this works is once we know who that audience is, so in this case, using that purchase-based segment, then the next step is to actually understand where and when they spend time in the physical world so you know what media to buy. So similarly to the way that the online world uses cookies, um, we actually use location data to create a moving map of where your audience is spending time throughout the day. Um, We all know we don't stay in one place during the day, so it doesn't make sense for your media to stay in one place during the day either. Um, So we then can purchase um, media that moves around following that same audience pattern. Um, So you could think about it of maybe running in certain transit locations in the morning, maybe some office buildings, um, shifting to, you know, bars and restaurants in the evening. Um, Obviously, we're all in slightly different movement patterns than usual these days, but people really are out and about. Um, You know, they're walking on the streets, they're going for drives, and they certainly are in critical retail locations to stock up on supplies for their family. So, you know, finding those areas where the audience you care about is spending time is really that critical component um, to activating out of home in a targeted way that will efficiently reach the people you care about. And so that's Awesome. And Shelly, you had even said like that you have proof of this, like you've been able to measure it and, you know, it might be like 2X, but how, how are you measuring? How, how is this measured? So the beauty is that when I started working, uh, myself and my team started working with Vistar just under two years ago, we were not actively working with many out-of-home companies, let alone helping with targeting and offline sales measurement. But with Vistar, we've been able to set up best practices for measurement of this fast growing medium for which the industry has not been measuring with accuracy, you know, historically beyond reach and frequency. So we are able to get exposure files from Vistar at the household level, which is a huge opportunity to build awareness of that capability because the notion of being able to tie a campaign directly at the household level to a conversion to offline sales, as well as provide a return on ad spend for that campaign is answers critical KPIs uh, for consumer package good advertisers. And you know, because it is household level, the consumer metrics also provide additional KPI uh, results. So, you know, answering questions such as, was that sales lift due to the campaign bringing more households to my brand? Or is the auto media increased rate at which my consumers are purchasing the brand? Those are additional you know, again, KPIs that consumer packaged good advertisers are asking for and, and you know, typically part of their uh, brand strategy is to know that information. So even backing up just a little bit, you know, in talking about this, how did like Vistar and IRI kind of come together and, and match these capabilities? Because this is a really unique space right here. Yeah, so, you know, out of home, um, for many years has always really been um, isolated in the awareness play um, type of media. And, you know, we've always believed that out of home really impacts the full funnel of metrics that advertisers care about, but it's a challenge to, you know, connect the dots and, and be able to measure the impact of what is a one to many medium to actual sales conversion. Um, So in working with IRI, um, that's where we realized we were able to combine our capabilities of using location data to understand what consumers were actually exposed to an out-of-home ad and map that to certain household indicators and then combine that with IRI's uh, expertise in actually analyzing the impact on sales for those households. Um, So that, you know, that's why I think we think this is a very exciting offering to be able to show that out of home impacts not just brand lift, not just foot traffic, but also um, a brand's bottom line on actually changing people's purchasing decisions. And Shelly, can you talk a little bit about, you know, how, like what opportunities this has like opened up for different clients? 
Yeah, we've seen, uh, at, you know, particularly with, with Vistar, we've done numerous studies, but we're also at, as this medium grows, out of home is, you know, exponentially growing because of digital and because of, you know, all the advantages digital has from, from an affordability standpoint, from a flexibility standpoint. So as it continues to grow, we've also, we've also been able to start looking into measuring like the audio um, that, that has just, you know, come about and is being considered as out of home, you know, you know, reaching when you can reach beyond some of the, in these days, there is, you know, a lot of real estate being taken up in, in the store to, you know, promote all the good health and requirements that are needed to stay safe. And so things like, um, you know, out of home really expands that footprint and expands that, that real estate, if you will, um, as, you know, a, a, a way to still talk to consumers at that point of decision tree uh, without, you know, needing as much of that, quote, real estate. And I think that actually touches on a really big um, element here, and that is what the pandemic has done to everything. I mean, we've, you know, we've talked about this just, I know I've made a couple of comments. We're not on the road as much. Um, when we're in the store, we're not maybe spending as much time looking around. You know, there's, um, I've lamented the lack of discovery for new products um, because people don't really take the time to peruse the shelves and stuff. Um, in fact, I would even, I know that like in-store displays are down um, because of food retailers looking for more um, space to, you know, to um, accommodate social distancing. So there's all these things that are kind of against um, advertising right now. But at the same time, what I'm hearing from the two of you is that, wow, out of home, particularly digital out of home is what is, is kind of helping at this time. Is that right? Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, there's a couple elements, you know, we know that consumers these days are, um, maybe shopping at different retail locations than they typically have in the past, um, or they're open to um, changing their behaviors for convenience and safety reasons. So I think that's, again, where reaching consumers on that um, path to purchase, really influencing them and trying to drive them to your retail locations is really critical. Um, but then we also know that once they're in the store, consumers um, are much less brand loyal at the moment. Um, you know, they're really open to just buying whatever is in front of them. And as you said, there's a lot less discovery and, and browsing happening in the store. So being able to keep your brand top of mind really in that purchasing environment and influence those last minute decisions is really critical and, and is a way that out of home can help um, either maintain your brand's position with that consumer or maybe capture uh, capture an opportunity away from your competitor by influencing you know the, these behaviors that are a little bit in flux right now when they're actually in that in that store making those decisions that's another important dynamic that we've not seen ever in my career probably is that notion of brand loyalty you know having gone out the window a bit and so to your point Leslie being able to target consumers that Retain um, and defend is sort of the the mantra, but essentially it's saying, okay, realize brand loyalty is you know not a given. So continue talking to your historically loyal consumers, but also work towards retaining those that you hadn't had before. I mean, it, both of those need to be you know a priority, and, and starts with that planning and that targeting in advance. So can you paint a picture for me, um, and maybe it's this funnel approach that you're talking about, but how the different elements of out of home, maybe from the broadest down to the narrowest, are helping with loyalty or helping guide um, shoppers to a particular store. Um, tell me what those some of those elements are in a really sound out of home strategy. Sure. So um, I can actually take you through an example that we we 
had on a real campaign, um, which was actually for um, an over-the-counter kind of cold and flu medication brand. So um, this brand wanted to um, capture some some spend from competitive purchasers. So we we started with um, identifying um, that audience of people who bought their competitive product. So starting with that purchase-based audience. Um, now that we know who those people were, then we had to, as I described, actually analyze where they move and how how they spend their time. And that led us to building a campaign that combined a mix of um, large format billboards and transit stations, um, some office buildings that actually matched that heat map of where those people were spending their time. Um, so that's re- those were really the elements that were reaching those people, um, you know, at mul- multiple touch points throughout their day, kind of influencing that path to purchase. And then the brand actually combined that with targeting the consumers in grocery stores and pharmacies, reaching them at that point of purchase where they're making that decision whether to buy the competitive product or this campaign's brand. Um, and you know, working with IRI, we analyzed the impact of um, this campaign. So we looked at people who were exposed to it um, compared with a control group and actually found that the campaign drove over a 10% lift in product sales, which, you know, I think is a pretty dramatic result, especially since this brand was already a pretty well-known household name. Um, so, you know, I think that kind of shows the combination of of reaching people multiple times in different environments and then kind of finalizing the messaging in that final push right in the moments of grabbing that product off the shelf. That's awesome. You know, I found something slightly off topic, but I think important is we've mentioned throughout this, how different our lives are. And I think during, especially the critical upfront time when maybe folks were not out as much or there was lockdown out of home really stepped up in that trusted way, I think, in communicating, you know, uh, thank you messages as an example. Um, and and I had read um, Anna Berger, who's CEO of the Out of Home Advertising Association of America, had mentioned in an article how trusting of a medium it's kind of always been. You know, if there's a child loss or something, you know, it's just, it is a trusted medium. I, I don't know exists per se with, with some of the other, you know, traditional dimensions of the marketing mix. That is actually fascinating. And you're absolutely right. There are definitely uh, messages that are um, community-based that are just like um, broader, like feel good messages where, um, you know, I'll, in fact, I'm going to take you back. So my children are now young adults, but when my kids were really little, we had a game and it was before they could read. It was, tell me what that billboard wants. What, tell me what the message is for that billboard. What are they either selling you or telling you? And a lot of them, some, well, I'll be, I'll be perfectly honest. Some I'm like, don't pay any attention to that billboard, but, (laughs) (laughs) but it was a really interesting game for my kids and it made them very aware. And you're right. Not all messages were by this, you know, service or product. It was just have a good day, be safe, be a good driver. Yeah. I think buckle up. (laughs) Yeah. Absolutely. Um, And I think there is something unique about out of home advertising in that, you know, because it is physical in a a real estate location, it really is part of the environment around it and the um, community around it. And, you know, I think as an industry, we've always tried to be part of that community by supporting, um, you know, these public service announcements and, and, um, community-based uh, communication services, but also even almost kind of more fundamentally, a lot of out-of-home uh, doesn't just exist to deliver advertising. It's there to provide a service to someone, you know, whether it's in a gas station or, um, you know, these kiosks that I mentioned, they're there to provide some value to people um, and the people that are engaging with it. So I think that is part of what makes it sort of a unique um, advertising format because it it has to put the consumer first 
um, and be really considerate of the environment. You know, it's not like a pop-up ad on the internet. An out-of-home screen is never going to pop up and block your way down the sidewalk, but it <laughs> sort of seamlessly integrate into the environment, you know, around where people are. Um, and I think even today with, you know, the current circumstances, um, when people are out and about outside of their house, it tends to be a pretty bright spot in their day. You know, I, I don't know about you, but for me, um, certainly back, things are a little bit more normal now, but back in the spring, um, going to the grocery store was kind of the highlight of my highlight of my day. So, you know, you can kind of reach people in these moments where they are feeling a, a more sense of normalcy and kind of engage with consumers in more of a unique way as part of that surrounding physical environment. And I would say that even, you know, um, individuals in the community have kind of picked up on that because I've never seen more lawn signs. I mean, granted, we're in a, in a political season right now, but I've never seen more lawn signs that say simple things like, you are beautiful and have a nice day. And we, you know, thank, thank you to our first responders. Thank you to our hospital workers. Um, just signs up and down the block. Um, you know, we're all walking a lot more right now because that's what's available. Um, and that has been truly a bright spot. So that's taking out of home to a very personal level. And taking it full circle, the, I hadn't thought about that, Joan, but just, folks doing their own painting of rocks with messages and putting them in communities. I mean, that's going back to right 1800s and the caveman and, you know, making a message in a rock type material, which is kind of interesting. I think as far from digital as we can get painted rocks, but, <laughs> <laughs> but yes, um, <laughs> This has been a really interesting conversation. I feel like my eyes are kind of opened in a new way. So I just want to recap some of the things that we talked about. Um, and that was the many forms, like the first for me is the many forms that out-of-home advertising can take. You know, it is the billboards, but now it's even digital billboards. It's screens of all kinds. It's audio, of course, in the signage, um, whether it's on a lawn, in a store, or on a rack. Um, and that those messages can be measured. Um, the impact of those messages or the impact of those campaigns all together um, can be measured and that some of the, res the results are, are positive. Um, I think that there has to be like a good strategy there. And Shelly, I know you spoke about targeting your audience, which I just find fascinating because that's not something that would have occurred to me um, so that's both targeting the audience and being able to measure it is really incredible. Um, and that it really expands like the footprint, even of in-store. You know, I think that this is this is maybe the new realm where I'm going to be more aware of out of home is in-store. You know, we're, we've all seen signage and stuff, but we haven't, like I haven't thought of that as tying it to the entire out of home universe. So um, there's opportunities right now, especially as loyalty is kind of um, uncertain, if you will, to like retain and defend for brands. Um, but I think it's a, most important that out of home kind of touches shoppers and consumers on their entire path to purchase that it can't just, I don't think it's really like a one and done. There has to be a lot of guidance and maybe that's through the funnel. Um, so with that, I want to thank you both so much for your time and I hope we have an opportunity to connect again soon. And in the meantime, stay safe and healthy. Thank you. Thank you, Joan. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you for listening. Please become a subscriber and let us know what you want to learn more about. We'll serve it up in a future IRI Growth Insights episode. Look for us wherever you get your podcasts and be sure to review IRI Growth Insights. Also, visit us on the web at iriworldwide.com and connect with us on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn.